an opportunity for you to hear from somebody other than me, from one of our outstanding graduating uh, seniors first, and that is Wyatt. I already told you a little bit about Wyatt, but I'm going to tell you a little bit more. Wyatt Roy was born in Washington, D.C. and grew up in Sydney, Australia. After moving back to the United States uh, to attend Stanford, he now considers the Bay Area his home. At Stanford, he pursued psychology from many different angles, as a major, as a teaching assistant, as a summer researcher, and as the principal investigator for his honors research. Supported by funding from Provost John Echimendi and working with his advisor, Greg Walton, he designed a month-long program to help undergraduates feel comfortable wearing bicycle helmets on campus. And I do believe that really is an important thing. He enjoys psychology from the perspective it gives him on academic pursuits outside the field in art, in design, in languages, and in computer science. Outside of academics, he plays the saxophone and the indigenous Australian didgeridoo. He's a freelance photographer, and he co-founded a writer's collective of daily 100-word essays called All of a Hundred. Starting in two days, he will travel around the world for two and a half months. I understand he's going west. Uh, so let me invite Wyatt Roy to the stage. Hi. Hi. Hello. You know, after, um, after four years studying psychology, I still have no idea what they were thinking when they asked me to speak. But uh, here goes. I want to congratulate everyone for being here today, whatever part you played. To the relatives, we needed you. We needed your genes. <laughs> to the peers, we couldn't have done it without you. We needed the environment. I dare say we needed both. <laughs> We've learned so many things at this school. Trying to convey these past four years in a minute is like tweeting Tolstoy. But I guess I'll start at the beginning. I hum was great. <laughs> really, I learned that the humanities conception of psychology hasn't really advanced since about a century ago. If modern psychology were still stuck in the age of literary psychology, we would all still be secretly attracted to those we shouldn't be, and our unconscious would be a ferocious battleground of passion and repressed yearning. Freud, 1905. <laughs> Fortunately, the field has come a long way. And yes, the speech has citations. <laughs> I love psychology because it taught me how to understand myself and, and others so much better. I felt like I got why people did what they did, and it felt great to have empirical evidence to back it up. <laughs> what psychology did not teach me, did not teach me, is that most people don't care what the jargon is that labels their everyday behavior. <laughs> I remember studying for a midterm and my roommate being the perfect material. <laughs> hey, Wyatt, man, he said. I just can't write this paper. I, I keep procrastinating. <gasps> oh, I said. There's this really interesting study that shows... Not again. No, really, I just keep going to late night cafeteria and chilling with people there. Actually, the food at late night is really good. I wonder why that is. It's so much better than dining hall food. It's weird because they make you pay for it. Cognitive dissonance. But last night, this guy cut the line. His excuse was that he hadn't slept in two days, and he'd missed dinner. Total jerk. Fundamental attribution. <laughs> so what'd you get? Chicken tenders. What? Everybody's favorite. Availability heuristic? <laughs> what? It's true. The person behind me in line got them too. False consensus effect. <laughs> oh, and oh yeah, I met this girl. But I only remember her first name. Primacy effect. And the last three digits of her phone number. Recency effect. Alright, Wyatt, how's studying for that psych midterm going? Really fun. <laughs> and like that, Stanford just dissolved into this 
This network of empirically researched psychological phenomena that predicted the irrational and explained the quotidian. And I started speaking in sentences like that. <laughs> I began to approach my whole life as a social psych experiment. The most fun people I met seemed to talk the most. Positive correlation, R equals 0.5. Correlation does not equal causation. <laughs> does talking make you fun? Or do fun people just talk more? Or is there a third mediating variable? <laughs> With psychology, I suddenly had the tools, the scientific tools and methods to answer some of life's coolest questions. I would randomly assign my friends to condition. Dependent and independent variables would scurry around my head like roly-polies. I had mixed results, inconclusive evidence. Sometimes that .05 p-value eluded me, other times it came out to play. I created a charity program to help students feel comfortable wearing bike helmets. I triggered positive stereotypes to help friends win at Beirut. At the height of my experiments, I locked N equals 16 males between 18 and 22 in my dorm basement for a week! Randomly assigned to prisoner or guard. And that's when my girlfriend suggested I might have taken the social psychologist's livelihood uh, a little far. So I let the guys out and I decided to stick with helmets. I love psychology for so many reasons. One of them is that it lets you zoom in and focus on the fundamental reasons behind human behavior. For me, this focus is the most compelling way to study humanity, its problems, and its promises. But it's equally important to zoom out. We, we have been brought up as yes people our whole lives. We've been told to accept new opportunities and keep our minds open, to try things, to learn. At Stanford, I figured out how to move beyond just saying yes, to saying, can I? To actively seek out new experiences. I would never have been lucky enough to meet my incredible advisor, Greg Walton, who couldn't make it today, if I hadn't bitten off more than I could chew and said, Greg, can I work with you? But moving from yes to can I is only the first part of this journey as I see it. We're about to become full free agents in this wonderful world, you know, people, real people, <laughs> endowed with an incredible education and unique opportunities open as a result of it. So now, moving forward, it's not our responsibility to just say yes or can I, but it's our privilege to say, do you want to, to create new opportunities. We have this, um, sorry, to not only say yes to opportunities and can, we, and can we join others, but to create new ones and offer them to others. For those of you in these delightful tents today who are not formally trained in psychology, you're at home, you're one of us, and when you wonder why someone said this or why you acted like that, you're thinking psychologically, and your idea is a hypothesis. It's human nature. We're all closet psychologists. For those of you here who have pursued psychology academically, we have the scientific tools to empirically test those ideas that everyone wonders about. We can put helmets on heads and help kids choose vegetables. We can encourage donations and evoke empathy. We can rebut the I hum kids Freudian thesis and explain why late night chicken tenders are delicious. We can dig for answers and we can change the world. So, do you want to? Thank you, Wyatt. That was great. Uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce our graduate student.